So before setting up a mist net, you obviously need a mist net, two very sturdy, preferably metal or long wooden stakes, a hammer, and a bright rope. So once you have your net set up at one end and you can bring it to the other, you can make sure that all of your panels are in order and everything's in tip-top shape and you're ready to go on the pole. As you'll see in another edition, simple shower curtains can reduce wear on your nets significantly uh, and make setup and takedown much easier. You have your net on the pole and you can get a handy assistant to, uh, to hold it for you at this stage um, or you can shove it into the ground to make it uh, stay while you get your rope prepared. So we have approximately three meters of bright rope. Uh, by having bright rope, you can avoid people tripping on it. People will always see it, whether it's visitors or actually banders. And we also have a big sturdy metal stake and it's also flagged with bright tape to avoid tripping. And we're gonna place this stake at about a 45 degree angle from the net pole. And we're gonna put it well into the ground. By putting the stake in on an angle, it will resist the friction and the pull from the rope. Again, at a 45 degree angle, away from the pole and angled backwards. So I have my rope, which I've put a little loop on the end of it so that we can pull the rope through it and create kind of a slip knot. And I'm gonna put that slip knot over our stake and pull tight. And I'm gonna do the same on the other side. So now that you have your two loose ends of the rope tied to your stakes, you have a loop, which is the end of your rope and you can choose at what height you wanna set your nets. With these particular nets in this environment, we typically have four panels up and two panels down. And you can pull the loop around the pole and you wanna take that underneath the two leading lines. Now at this point, the knot is locked against the pole. And one of the beauties of this knot is that from this position, you can adjust the tension by pulling back, but you can also adjust the angle of the net by pulling one way or the other. So if you're on a hill and you need to angle your net in a certain direction, you can automatically adjust the angle or you can just pull it taut and make sure that it's straight with your other side. So you have the loop end of your rope. You're gonna pull that underneath the leading lines. That's the most important part. At this point, you can adjust the tension of your net and pull up on your loop, and that's the lock. You'll notice I'm not touching the pole. Everything is locked in place and incredibly tight. From here, you're gonna go back outwards, loop around the pole, and come to the back of the net, and then you're gonna go down. And you're gonna loop around the pole in the opposite direction at this point. And this is sort of completing the lock. So one, two, three loops, or depending on how much rope you have. And at this point, you can pull all these loops up tight. And what this is doing is helping this lock to actually lock tight against the pole. At this point, you just take your loose loop and tie a very simple knot around the leading lines, two for good measure. You should have a little bit left over and you can just tie it at the back. So you've brought the loop under, under the leading line, around the top and backwards, over and down. and you're done. If it doesn't look beautiful, try again. Another thing with this knot is that if you come out in the morning and the net is loose, or if it rained, or if an animal jumped on the net, you can come out in the morning and just simply slide the knot up and adjust the tension in your net.